The narrative that Russia has the resources to win the war against Ukraine is not true. At the same time, Russia will not be able to easily end the war for a number of economic reasons. This is what the American magazine Foreign Policy writes, citing OSINT analysts. It is noted that Russia's military economy is moving towards a dead end. Signs that official data mask deep economic hardships caused by both war and sanctions are becoming increasingly clear. The Kremlin will not be able to ramp up production fast enough to replace weapons at the rate at which they are being lost on the battlefield. Already about half of all the artillery shells Russia uses in Ukraine come from North Korean stockpiles. At some point in the second half of 2025, Russia will face serious shortages of several categories of weapons, the article says. When Russia will reach the end of the road with each type of weapon is unknown, but the Kremlin can do little to prevent that day, the magazine writes. In addition, it is indicated that Russia will not only be unable to wage war for long, it will also not be able to easily make peace. Huge military spending, which is unsustainable in the long term, artificially stimulates employment and growth. Almost all new jobs are military-related and do not bring much benefit to the civilian economy, most sectors of which have great difficulty finding workers. The scale of Russia's post-war recession will be even worse since Russia's civilian economy, especially small and medium-sized enterprises, has shrunk due to the war, the publication notes. As foreign policy summarizes, Russia's leaders face an unenviable set of dilemmas of their own making. Russia will not be able to continue fighting the current war beyond the end of 2025 when it begins to run out of key weapon systems. However, concluding a peace agreement creates a different set of problems. Ultimately, the Kremlin will have to choose between three unpleasant options. Cut the armed forces and the defense industry, which would trigger a recession that could threaten the regime. Maintain high levels of defense spending and a bloated peacetime military that will stifle the Russian economy. Use the army to obtain the economic resources necessary to support it through new conquests. An end to full-scale fighting in Ukraine will not end the West's problem with Russia. Russia's vast military sector encourages the Kremlin to use its military to extract rents from neighboring states. The alternatives, demobilization and recession, or endless funding of a bloated military and defense industry, pose existential threats to the Putin regime. However, Russia ends its current war, the country's economic realities will themselves create new forms of insecurity for Europe. Forward-thinking policymakers should focus on mitigating these future threats, foreign policy stated. The European Union must abandon its policy of sanctioning Russia for its war in Ukraine or risk causing an economic collapse, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban told State Radio on Friday. The EU has imposed several rounds of sanctions against Moscow since Russian President Vladimir Putin launched the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, targeting the energy sector, banks, the world's biggest diamond mining company and other businesses. Orban, widely seen as having the warmest relations with the Kremlin in the EU, has broken with the majority of European leaders and vocally opposed such sanctions, arguing they did more to damage European economies than they did Russia's. The Hungarian leader on Friday said the EU's sanction regime should be reviewed, because with such a policy of sanctions, energy prices will not come down. It will be painful for those who argued for sanctions. Not for us, because we will see this as a victory, but the other camp has to change because otherwise it will destroy the European economy, he said. Hungary currently holds the six-month rotating presidency of the EU, and has de-emphasized retaliatory measures against Russia in that role. EU leaders, however, are making plans to impose a new round of penalties against Moscow. On Thursday, the European Parliament adopted a resolution demanding the EU step up against Russia's so-called shadow fleet, ships that export Russian oil in violation of sanctions. The legislature also wants the bloc to ban the import of Russian fossil fuels. Orban opposes such a ban, and has leveraged exceptions from the EU during previous rounds of sanctions that allowed landlocked Hungary to continue importing Russian oil and gas, which he argues are essential to sustaining Hungary's economy. 
The Hungarian leader last week predicted that President-elect Donald Trump would pull U.S. support for Ukraine in its war against Russia. A Trump presidency, Orban has argued, will revive Hungary's sputtering economy, now in a technical recession. The pro-peace presidential candidate won, and now we are waiting for peace, Orban said Friday.